I mean, if you want to put Al Sutton in the game, we got Sam and Goose. If you want to put Ward Dillon in the game, we got a Dillon Simmons and Peter Bowe. And then I'm scraping everything up. So, hey, let's play football. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Al. All right. Warwick Dunn, Florida State. Mike Allstott, Purdue. The real USC, University of Southern California. I think because South Carolina is in town to play on the Outback Bowl. That's thrown over the middle to Allstott, and he is stopped since he took over in 96, 12 and 1 at home. Average rush, 2.7 yards per attempt as Johnson gets hit as he throws, intended for Dunn, and overshoots him. Dunn was covered by Ray Lewis, so it's fourth down and 14. Against the four-man Baltimore front, and they give it to Warwick Dunn. He has a little bit of room to roll. The umpire goes down in the pile as well. And let's take a look at the Baltimore defense. Gray Lewis, University of Miami. Universe. Second down and six. Mike Allstott carrying the ball. So we saw it done, and now Allstott close to a first down. Two guys coming out of the Tampa backfield. Eric. Who's going to be the more effective tonight? What do you think? Well, Al, I really believe they should feature Warwick Dunn against this Ravens defense because of his quickness. They should run quick traps and draws. Plays that take a long time to develop won't work because of the quickness of this defense. I really don't think they should feature Mike Allstott. He's not quick. He's a power back, and he's not really able to make people miss. He's a straight line runner, and that is what this Ravens defense like. Straight line runners. So we'll see what Dunn does tonight in a year. And Dungey can play mix and match. They're both in the game here. All start the fullback. Dunn is the tailback. And Johnson to throw. Dunn's it over the middle. And it's almost picked off by Lewis, who had two last week against Cincinnati. Well, that was the amazing thing about Lewis in the Super Bowl last year, the way he drops into these patterns. Hey, eh, Dano? Well, he's got great speed. He's got great depth. And he's got awareness. He has to fight behind the umpire there, Carl Madsen. Maybe, just maybe, Brad Johnson didn't see him hiding behind the umpire, but it seems like guys get hot on defense too. We've seen Rondé Barber with interception tonight, almost got another one. Now Ray Lewis has the nose for the ball. Second and ten, they flank Olstock out to the left, line him up as a wideout, give the ball to Dunn, and Warwick can go nowhere. Minimal gain, if any. Ray Lewis is there, so Lewis drops into coverage and then makes the tackle of the line of scrimmage on the next play. Well, the locals are restless. Now they're restless because uh, this man is the quickest linebacker in football. Real speed here, recognizing, dodging the block of Randall McDaniel, making the tackle on Warwick Dunn. Saragusa took on two men. It looked like he was wearing them like water wings. After the Bucks take a shot with Johnson for six, they go back to the ground. Dunn, good hard running to the 30, picking up 30. <laughs> Just to finish the story at the 30 yard line. Johnson throws, and that is caught by Warwick Dunn for a first down at the 24. Dwayne Starks and Ray Lewis make the tackle. That's just what Eric Dickerson was talking about the effectiveness of Warwick Dunn on the draw play on the previous play where he kept his feet driving and picked up six yards to this option route against Ray Lewis and the zone coverage of the Ravens. One thing about Dunn, he's so tough. You know, he's going to get hit here by Ray Lewis on one side and Dwayne Starks on the other. They love to go to him on third down. He leads the club at 26 third down receptions for first downs, and that is caught. That's an all star to the 20-yard line for a gain of three. You know what's beautiful about Ray Lewis is he doesn't need much of a glide path to really crack you hard. I mean, the guy sets up and powers through his tackles. It seems like if he's only one step away. First and 10 now at the 12. Allstock goes to the middle. And he gets bunched up, but is able to chug forward to gain three to the nine yard line. Up by one. Draw, done. Warwick to the six yard line, setting up a third and four. You know, when Ray Lewis comes back to the defensive huddle, flexing his arm like that, Al, he might as well be pumping up the defensive players. They so feed off his warrior mentality. You got 10 other guys who are lit on fire just by that simple gesture. Five times, third and four at the six. He throws, and that's deflected. Saragusa is number 98. There he is right there. Right hand is enough as Brad Johnson rushed that throw. Not in this instance. First and goal inside the one. Won't stop the tailback. He gets the ball and gets taken down at the three-yard line. 
Taken down by Boulware. Spins offside. Defense. They were. Number 58 was lined up in the neutral zone at the time of the snap. We will penalize half the distance to the goal line. Replay the down. Ray Lewis featured in our mic up at the half segment. First starting field position tonight. They begin from the 20 yard line and they begin with Dunn on the ground picking up a couple following the terrorist attack. So what would have been week two's game between Minnesota and Baltimore now becomes the Monday night game next week. This is Warwick Dunn up past the 30 up to the 34 yard line. And there's that quickness that Eric Dickerson talked about. First down, Brad Johnson leads him up at the 26-yard line. Keep it on the ground, and Warwick done on second down. New Year's Eve. <laughs> oh, Dick Clark's rocking second year's Eve. <laughs> First down, this is Warwick Dunn picking up three. Well, we had Ray Lewis mic'd up at the half. Here's an outtake with him talking about defending Keyshawn Johnson. his ass he ain't gonna outrun you okay. all right tell Chris and the Wayne just to get their hands on Keyshawn game over that's all you got to tell him you ain't got to coach him tell him just to get their hands on him game over I'm telling you now slow 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 second down and six as Johnson throws here's Dunn out in the flat seeking the first down and getting it and what Ray Lewis is talking about is he was challenging Chris McAllister to come up on the line of scrimmage, press Keyshawn off the line of scrimmage, don't worry about Keyshawn running behind him. Then he goes to the veteran, 15-year vet, Rod Woodson, and tells him to tell McAllister and Dwayne Starks on the other side that if you take Keyshawn out of the game, we win this game. More importantly, are we allowed to say ass? No. Okay. Yeah, there and get him hot going into the playoffs. Second down and 10 as Allstock fights his way, and that's quintessential Allstock to the 34-yard line. It looks like he has nothing. The next thing you know, picks up about four. And a lot of it is just pure desire, but it's also smart running. As he jumps to the outside here, watch the quick feet. Now watch how he lowers his pad level. Watch how low he gets to the ground here as he heads north. I'm not sure if that's north or not, but in football terms, this is running north. You go west a little bit, then you make that right turn, lower your head, and get down the field. Arizona Cardinals with that ill-fated celebration against the Giants. And Warwick Dunn has room to roam and picks up a first down. 17-yard game. <laughs> kind of like make Garrow Uprebium look like Vasily Alexiev. <laughs> Here's Allstock. He picks up close to 10. Tackled by Brad Jackson. How would you like to be Billy Grammatica living in your brother's shadow when he's like 5'3"? <laughs> it's a tight fit. Now the Buccaneers are finding something on the left side as Allstott cuts all the way away from Jamie Sharper. Back-to-back -back runs. First it's Warwick Dunn, and then it's Allstott as... Peter Bulwer takes himself out of the play. Nice block by Cook. Jamil Cook helping to pave the way. Here's Allstock. Wow. Picks up four. four <laughs> I knew it was coming. I'm just trying to remember. It. He didn't have a name and number on his back. Uh -uh. Gain a one for Allstock. Yard line gain of four. Lewis in on that stop. Second and six from the 43. Allstott inside the 40 bangs his way for a first down to the 36 yard line. Well, that's the beautiful thing about the uh, Ravens defense. You might have to rate them as one of the best all time, and they really don't blitz. They don't need a lot of sacks. Watch the explosion here. Watch how low Allstott comes on. Corey Harris and just drives him backwards, but this is the sound of it. Man. Pretty good night for Allstott and Dunn. 49 yards for Allstott, 44 for Dunn. 
and they're both in the game here. From the 36, they give it to Dunn. Picks up 33, check in with Eric. Well, uh, watching from the field, one thing I like about these Ravens linebackers is their speed. They're able to run like linebackers, and they have great stamina. Now, we're in the fourth quarter, and they're still running like we're in the first quarter. They seem to never get tired, and they also are very good tacklers in open space. You know, Lewis has those beautiful choppy steps. His feet always seem so close to the ground. It's tough to get him off his feet. to the done deal. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Offense. Offense. Two men moving Two men at the same, at the same time. time. Five yard penalty. penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Second down. They had the ball at the 49. Baltimore is all of its time last plus the two minute warning. And here's Warwick Dunn going nowhere. Now do the Ravens want to start taking their timeouts here or wait? Yeah they do. They take it here. Because Baltimore has two timeouts. The ball is at the 31 yard line. They'll play it conservatively. Allstein has tackled their timeout. Baltimore. Ray Lewis makes the hit. Waxed a little early. Second down and 11 from the 33-yard line. Allstein. And this will write a finish to the ball game. Touchdown. have those good seats right under the cannon. Dungey wants to call timeout to talk about going for two to increase this lead to 14. 22 to 10 Tampa Bay as Mike Allstott in a situation where they're just trying to run the clock out. And Baltimore is just pressing the line of scrimmage trying to force a turnover. When there's 11 men up on the line of scrimmage, once Allstott gets into the secondary, he can pick on a defensive back to run over for a touchdown. Allstott was looking for somebody to hit. Well, he <laughs> saw that goal line there, and he knew if he didn't go north and south, he probably wasn't going to get in. The success for the Buccaneers running to the left side tonight behind Kenyatta Walker, number 69, and Cozy Coleman out in front, pulling guard at 300. And 22 pounds leading the way for Mike Allstott. But right now, all Tampa knows is they can start printing playoff tickets. And Baltimore will leave here with a mark of nine and six. I guess New Orleans isn't really their nemesis, but they both needed that game, is what I'm saying. They, they came up big last week and once again this week. Tampa wins it 22 to 10 as we go to the field. Here's Melissa. Well, Tony Dungy said that this game would come down to whichever team had the most emotion. Mike, what was said during the pregame warm-ups to get you guys so fired up? Uh, there was a, really wasn't anything said. Uh, he just said there's been enough said. Uh, we've been fighting all year to get in this position. We're in the driver's seat. Let's go do it for 60 minutes. There's been so much talk this year about his job being on the line. Now he's 13 and one at home in December. You've all but mathematically clinched a playoff spot. Is it time for those people to shut their mouths? Of course, and uh, this team has never considered uh, Coach Dungey's our leader. He's the guy we want to play for, and he's the guy that's going to be here for a long time. And uh, I don't know why we make it so harder on ourselves, but uh, this team has a lot of pride and a lot of character, and it's just fun to play for. Mike, congratulations. Thank you. Let's go over to Eric.